welcome back to Plow and Pantry. Today we are taking a peek through the seeds that I bought this year. I did vow to buy less seeds this year. I have quite a few, especially the ones that I um, plant year after year. I'm well stocked on those. I've saved some. But there were, as always, just a few things that still just tempted me. So um, I did end up with a few unplanned items. But for the most part this year, I am concentrating my garden budget on more blueberry plants. I'm redoing my strawberry patch area. So I need more strawberry plants and I wanna put some more into um, more structural things like edgings on um, certain beds, stuff like that. Some more perennials in my front yard, flower bed, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna start with the smaller companies here that I ordered from <clears throat> and work my way up. Not smaller companies, but smaller orders, I should say that. So uh, let's start with high mowing because that's the first thing I grabbed off of the smaller ones on top. Um, this is actually the most I've ordered from high mowing. I do love them as a company. I have not had any bad luck with any of their things. I just, it's more expensive. And so I tend to not buy from them, but this is, they tempted me with some things. They are also transitioning their packaging into some with pictures, which I appreciate. I know it costs more and I'm the one paying for that, but I, Appreciate sometimes, like for example, this um, Jasper F1 cherry tomato. I sometimes can't remember why I ordered this because it was not on my list to order this year, but I was some for some reason. For some reason, I was tempted to get it. So, um, I sometimes the picture will tip that off, tip me off to that. Um, I. I also accidentally ordered two of these peppers. Okay, so let's just start, start here. I am trying a bunch, not a bunch, but several different varieties of the smaller red tomatoes. Cause if you watched my um, seed review from last year, I'll link that if you, if you wanna see it. Um, I don't like, I always loved sweet 100s, just regular sweet 100s, which have been phased out. And so, I've tried Sweet Millions, did not like them. I've tried some other popular ones. They were okay, but nothing like the flavor and production of those Sweet 100s, nothing has compared to that for me. So um, I do have an orange one I like and a yellow one I like, but the red one, I still want a red um, smaller tomato. Um, so first from high mowing here, I got the HMS Red Picnic Pepper, which apparently I accidentally ordered two of. I did not realize that, but two came and it was two on the packing list. Um, I love red bell peppers that aren't hot. These are sweet. Um, they're smaller, so they're um, more of the snacking size. They're slightly bigger than the regular snacking ones, but they are supposed to be really sweet and snacking, and I like that. Um, a Ronde de Nice Summer Squash is the French heirloom bush plants harvest at pool ball size. I don't know what a pool ball is. I'm gonna have to look at this picture because I can't remember why I got this one. Um, I'm not a big summer squash person, but if I'm remembering right, there was something that just sounded better about this one. Um, so it's, it didn't remind me of regular summer squash. I'm trying to semi-sort these. Okay, here's another pepper. HVNF1 Sweet Pepper. This is a stunning blocky fruit with exceptional flavor and texture. Again, I'm always, I have certain sweet peppers I like to grow, but I'm always looking for more because I love them. Jasper F1 Cherry Tomato. I'm gonna have to look this one back up because I don't know why I got that one. I, it probably is a small red one that had a good review and description and that enticed me. Ico Ico Sweet Pepper. This is a red, orange, purple, yellow. It's a whole rainbow. Um, early season. My peppers for me don't come really ripe until beginning of August. So anything that says early season and tastes good, I usually try because I would like to get some earlier in the summer. The Ollie F1 pepper is another, it says early pepper that goes the distance with high yields over a long harvest window. King of the North. So I'm not sure what to do here because I'm in the Southeast. We'll find out. I should, I should give the disclaimer here that just because I bought all these seeds doesn't mean I'm planting them all. 
Once I'm done showing them to you, I will sort them into all my other seeds by type, like all the tomatoes together, all of the cucumbers together, that kind of thing, and then I'll decide what I'm planting. Piccolino F1 cucumber, I'm still looking for cucumbers I love. I liked, I mentioned a couple years ago, I had trialed um, seeds for University of Tennessee, and I liked Bristol and Southern, Southern Delight. Um, they can be hard to find those seeds though, so I'm still looking for other slicing cucumbers. So I'm gonna try this Piccolino F1. It is a, I believe it was a little, like a four or five inch, like a real snacking cucumber. The Dayton F1 cabbage. Um, this has, it was just pretty. It was just really pretty. I wish there was a picture on this for you. It was pretty. White Russian kale, that's our favorite kale. Um, I feel like it's the sweetest and most, um, a little more tender and more streamlined tasting, not so strong. Well, hello, the puppy is wanting attention. Um, Alba Lunga Romaine Lettuce, large, elegant, pale green, glossy romaine, with sweet, juicy leaves, and short core. Outer leaves have beautiful, floral, lightly puckered appearance. Just wanted to try it. I think something may have said that it was good in the heat. That's usually, if I'm trying a new lettuce, I want something, I'm trying something that says it's good in the heat. I have problems here with, with lettuces I've mentioned before. In the spring, our temperatures dip and climb and dip and climb in the fall. We do the opposite, you know, we can be, example, snow on the ground three days ago, 61 degrees outside yesterday gardening. It's crazy around here. And that can make plants get bitter or bolt or what have you. Last two from High Mowing, Indigo Apple Tomato. Does that not just look beautiful? It's just pretty, right? It's also early, um, shiny black, aromatic, mild aromatic tomato flavor, improved by full ripening from shiny black to matte purple. I have not yet tried a black or purple tomato that I love the taste of as much as red. I do love the way they look on the vine though. They're beautiful. And sometimes I just want to grow them for their beauty, but maybe that one will be better. Uh, Burgess Butter Scrub Buttercup Winter Squash. I'm growing these for like fall decoration, so I won't be planting them early. I'll be planting them more midsummer so that I have them for fall. All right, that was my high mowing order. Next, okay, I did order this year from two companies that I do not normally order from. Let's see if I can find them. Oh, that's not it. This is not it. Here's one of them, okay. I ordered a few things from Burpee, which I don't normally do. I thought I had these organized for right now. Okay, so I don't normally, I ordered from both Burpees and Gurneys this year. Um, I don't normally do that. I, I stay away from the big giant companies. I don't like how they operate and um, customer service, well, Gurney's hasn't been bad customer service, stuff like that. Just, um, but sometimes they have some varieties that just really entice me. And that's what happened this year. Um, and I'm not, and they're, they're usually hybrids. I love heirloom plants, but for certain growing conditions, hybrids can be helpful. And I'm not, I'm anti-GMO, but I'm not anti-hybrids. It's been done for hundreds of years. It's fairly natural. I just don't like that companies will only carry hybrids so that you can't save seeds and what have you. Anyways, from Burpee, I got a Pesto Party Basil. I grew a bunch of different basils, basils last year. I can link a video where I was harvesting some of it. Lots of basil last year because I was trying so many different types. And I really just like regular Genovese basil. Um, but this one just sounded, it says the latest flowering, which is a problem for me with them flowering and like having to constantly snip off those flowers like every day to keep them from bolting. Um, so I'm hoping that means that I can take a little more time with that one. Winter squash harvest moon hybrid. Um, I wish this had a picture. This is one of those blue squashes, medium to small size. Again, I'm growing this for fall decoration. Burpee's golden beet is supposed to be, um, one of the best golden beets, and I love golden, I love all the beets, but um, I especially love golden beets roasted in my salads. Candy apple hybrid sweet pepper. This is a red sweet pepper. Um, I, 
I don't think I've grown this one before. I've grown something with a similar name though. Um, tomato, two tasty hybrids. So this is a slicing tomato and I don't normally try new slicing. I always say I'm not gonna try new slicing tomatoes because I know which ones I love to grow. Um, but this one just sounded awesome. Um, let's see, tasty times two, rich red and purple black couple with fruit that is doubly appealing. Harvest clusters, you know what, these are small, that's why. There's a small, there's a small red to purple one. I'm sorry about the noise, my dog is playing with his toy. And that's good because that means he's not playing with me. Um, he's a puppy, y'all. <laughs> He's almost grown out of it. Um, so these are small red ones with like a purple black. That's why I got those. Kale Prism Hybrid, this one just sounded good. I have not tried this before. It is, it was pretty looking actually. He just brought me his toy. He brought me his Kong toy. He wants me to fill it for him. Um, okay, and then I'm trying this one, Super Sauce hybrid tomato. This is a paste tomato. I normally um, only plant Amish paste for my paste tomato because I feel like I get my more bang for my buck then, but this one said that each tomato fills one jar canning. And I was like, what? Like fruits weigh in at two pounds. So we'll see. I thought I would give it a try and see. For me though, flavor kicks everything else as far as, um, so if it comes out and that's true and I can, it's very prolific and gives me several jars out of one plant, but it doesn't taste as great as an Amish paste, then I won't end up buying it again because that's my number one. Okay, gurneys. I normally, again, don't buy from these, but I will say that I have had good customer service from gurneys when I had a problem once they fixed it right away. But I will also say that I ordered all my seeds one day and gurneys were the last to come by a couple weeks. I got all the rest of my orders within a week and these were like three and a half weeks later. It's crazy. Okay, so Red Titan Beet. Now he's eating food. This is a um, Red Titan Hybrid. It is supposed to be a really good, hearty Lufa Gourds. Okay, I have not jumped on the Lufa train. Hi, buddy. As far as growing Lufas and um, just because I didn't use them that much, but I've been making soap lately and I found this cool soap idea where it like slices a loofah and then builds the soap around that. So like your loofah and your soap are one and I just wanted, I was like, why not just grow it then? Unbeatable beet. This is supposed to be, oh, this is like your top selling beet or something. It's a hybrid. Um, tomato hybrid jelly beans this is another small red I wanted to try. It sounded good. I think I had this on a wish list previously and didn't buy it. So this year I'll try it. Um, Mexican sunflower, I do have more flowers in my seed packets this year and that's part of why I have more seeds than I plan on getting because I decided I wanted to grow more flowers. Somebody had reviewed this, um, I can't remember who, but they said that it was a really dark, beautiful um, sunflower and it's a good cutting sunflower and that's what I wanted was cutting. And then Gurney's Blue Ribbon Hybrid Broccoli, which is um, supposed to be really good with the different growing conditions I have. So I wanted to give that one a try because broccoli has been a hit and a struggle for me. Sometimes it's done really, really well. Sometimes it has not done well at all, barely even germinated. So if that one works well, then I would love to do that because um, one of my daughters, that's her favorite vegetable is broccoli, so I would like to grow more of it. I'm gonna get my dog a bone. Be back. Okay, back, let's see. Okay, a couple random things here. So I had bought, I bought these last year. They were already in my stash and I pulled them out. This is my favorite zinnia, the giant wine zinnia. I think that I, um, I pulled them out because I was seeing what zinnias I already had because I ordered a bunch of zinnias from Johnny's and I wanted to not double order because I want to make like a whole different colored zinnia hedge on the side of my house. So I got those and I had pulled these out too. 
um, that I got in like at Lowe's or something. There's uh, the double purple violet queen and the double flowered lavender gem. That does not look lavender to me, but we'll see when it's actually blooming. Um, but those, I, I just had them, I didn't buy them right now. I just have them out because I was deciding what to buy. Okay, um, True Leaf Market. I did not buy very much from them. I like them as a company. I like their, um, what they stand for. They're just more expensive. And so I don't often order from them. So I got Nevada Batavian Lettuce. This was um, something I was tempted to get from someone on YouTube. Can't remember who because it was very heat tolerant. And that again, lettuce heat tolerance. I need that. And then I got two things that I want to try new this year. And True Leaf Market was the only place I could find them. Um, one is this um, sorghum, cane sorghum. I want to try making sorghum syrup. So we'll see if I can grow that. And then the other was on corn wheat. Um, I didn't get very much. I mean, this will plant like a row, but um, I just want to experiment with it. And I've, I've been kind of, I've kind of shied away from the wheat and been like, you know, it takes too much to grow enough for your family or whatever. So I'll just, and we don't do a whole lot of bread and stuff, but I think I saw a video with um, Laura from Garden Answer where she grew wheat last year and then showed like the threshing and grinding. And, and, and I was like, I could do that. And it didn't take as much wheat as I thought it would. So I was like, I just need to grow enough to experiment with a few recipes. So we'll see if it works out. It's an experiment. We'll have fun with it. That is part of the fun of living in the country on a little bit of property is that I have room to experiment. Okay, from Johnny's this year, I ordered more than I usually do from them. Again, they're a more expensive company to me, but they also have more seeds in their packets and I just usually don't need as many seeds in my packets, so I don't usually order from them. But I did order a whole bunch of zinnias because they had more options. Um, in the color family I wanted. So I have the Gener the Benary's Giant Coral Zinnia. And hold on, where'd all my zinnias go? They were together. The Benary's, Benary's Giant, sorry about the dog, y'all. Giant White Zinnia, the Giant Purple, Giant Bright Pink, Giant Carmine Rose, Giant Lime, Giant Salmon Rose, Giant Wine, which was the other one I showed you from Haas. And those are all the zinnias, okay? So in addition to the flowers there, I got, or the zinnias, I have um, a hybrid bell pepper. This does not say on it. I'm assuming this is red, red or orange. You're killing me, Smalls. He's already in his bone. He's a puppy, but he's not small. And he has baby raptor teeth. Um, let's see, hybrid indeterminate tomato. It does not say what kind it is. Some sort of hybrid indeterminate tomato. Certified organic. It just says tomato. It doesn't say what kind. I'm gonna have to look at my I have to look at my order history online because I don't think I have the order slip anymore and find out what that was. Um, Bolero carrots. I want to try these. These are, I think I got pelleted. I want to try pelleted. I have shied away from pelleted because I have heard they have a lower germination rate, but um, some people love them and they don't seem to have a problem with them. So I thought I'd try them. Bolero are supposed to be good for storing. Um, our favorite carrots are Scarlet Nanties. But the Lero is supposed to be long storage, and that's why I want to try that. Um, Frise Rouge Kale just looked fun. Black Bear Pumpkin, again for fall decoration. Um, Harvest Moon Tomato. I want to say this was a white one, and that intrigued me. Oh, another, another below. I got two packets of Bolero carrots. Um, Sugar Snacks Hybrid Carrots as well, and... Marmalade Skies Tomato. This is supposed to be a yellowish orange one that is very sweet. And and honestly, making tomato marmalade sounded good. I mean, you can do that with regular tomatoes, but um, it just intrigued me. It looked pretty and I wanted to try it. Normally, yellow and an orange tomatoes are not my favorite tomatoes for as far as slicing tomatoes, but thought I'd go ahead and give them a try. Okay, um, so next 
is the Baker Creek. Now we're getting into some fun pictures. So from Baker Creek, I got a Pinto Mix Coleus. I have grown these before. I like them in my front flower pots. Um, they have, they've done well for me before. Um, they were easy to germinate and grow. So, and it saved me a lot of money at the nursery trying to fill my front pots. Um, I want to try some more, I'm going to try onions from seed this year. I'm still going to order my plants like I normally do my uh, starts, but I don't, um, I want to try some from seeds, but the plants are my main plans, the seeds, that way they can fail if they want to. Um, and I'm going to try them both in winter sowing and starting them here and direct sowing. Anyways, this is a round trochaea onion. I am also, by the way, a little bit of a zone pusher and... I am going to be trying onions that are both short day, intermediate, actually not short day, intermediate day and long day. Because um, in my area in Tennessee, some maps I am short day onion, some maps I'm intermediate day onion. I have not had any luck at all with short day onions. Um, I have had good luck with intermediate, but last year I also planted some that were supposed to be long day onions and they were, they did really well. But on no map am I a long day onion person. So I'm gonna experiment and make my own choices there. Prairie Fire Tomato. Aren't those just beautiful? Bok Choy Sozu Baby. One of my daughters loves um, bok choy. I thought I'd get her a new one to try. She likes the purple lady bok choy. It's her favorite. Uh, Lace Flower in pink. This kind of looks like Dara a little bit. That was pretty. Uh, Richmond Green Apple Cucumber. This just sounded fun. Lettuce leaf basil, look at the size of those leaves. If those have good flavor and they're not huge, that would be amazing. Big rainbow tomato, again, another one where the picture got me. Description two. Brown sugar tomato, it's supposed to be very, very sweet. Sweet bonnet pepper, this is supposed to be like a scotch bonnet flavor, but with no heat. And um, I, sorry, my dog's tugging on me, I have this ball in my hand. Um, it's supposed to be like a scotch bonnet, but no heat. And I've never actually had a scotch bonnet. I've stayed away from them because I've heard that they are so hot. Um, and I'm a wimp that way, but I thought I'd try the sweet version of it. Savannah grass, I want to grow this for just like cut flower foliage. Blacktail mountain watermelon, um, always does well for me. It's a standby for me. Kilimanjaro white marigold, again, another standby for me. It is, um, I don't like typical marigolds, especially the colors. I shy away from orange things um, and reds, but these I like, and my chickens love these. They love them. Um, king size red straw flower. Those just looked pretty to me. Hello, he's pushing on me. He's a big dog. Hey, you wanna say hi? Come here. Say hi, Jet. Hi, this is Jet. Hi. And he is very playful, a large puppy. Okay. Moline, um, this is a medicinal plant, but it, it, look at those flowers, it looks pretty. Southern Charm Moline. Strawberry spinach has been on my wish list to try for a long time and I just haven't. Um, so this year might be the year. Kale Tronchuda. I got this one because it looks more like a collard green and I do like to make wraps with collard greens. But my luck with collard greens has been hit or miss. Hey, watch those claws. Hit and miss, but um, You're killing me. Get down, get down. How about, you know what? I think you need to go outside and play. Okay, let's finish this up. <laughs> um, collard greens have been hit and miss for me, so I thought I would try this one. It looks like a cross between kale and collard green. Celosia, um, a rainbow sherbet. This is beautiful. I have also not had luck with growing celosia, but I've heard it's easy, but we'll see. We'll find out. Elephant dill, I'm all, I'm still looking for the perfect dill for me, for everything. Um, Utrecht blue wheat, again, for filler and foliage. Does this not look beautiful? It's like a blue-gray wheat. Jutsrenska radish. This is supposed to be mild and sweet, and uh, it's more cylindrical, like a French breakfast, but no white area. Green doctor's tomato. Um, Good sweetness and lots of tart. We'll see, we'll see. Malaga radish, this dark purple one just looked fun. Polish variety. 
I thought it would just look pretty. I like to do pickled radishes with other vegetables for tacos and things. My Genovese basil that I plant every year, which also was the free seed this year, so I have a stash now, along with the Komatsuna Old Tokyo um, probably mustard green. And then Landis winter lettuce was another free seed, um, which we'll see. I also usually have too cold of a winter to grow lettuce, so we'll see if that works. I always like Baker Creek's envelopes. Okay, so my largest order this year was actually from M.I. Gardner. So I, I usually order from him, but not as much, honestly, because he sold out half the time. But this year he had a sale. I ordered early and I got just about everything I wanted. So I got a ton from M.I. Gardner. Um, we've got glass gem corn for fall decoration. Purple sprouting broccoli. I have grown before, but I want to grow it just in fall this time. Golden Detroit beet. Standby. Red noodle pole bean. I don't normally um, get the long ones, but I think I saw a recipe with them that intrigued me, so I want to try it. Cannellini beans. I have some of these. I needed more to grow enough for the year. Red kidney beans, again, I need enough for the year. Uh, Rio Zape bush bean. Thought I'd try this one. It looks very similar to a pinto, but it's supposed to have great flavor. Garbanzo beans. Um, an aster, apricot colored aster. I love the asters. The Chinese asters have come out beautiful. Pink sunrise calendula. I do like to grow calendula both because it's pretty and I dry it and use it for things. Um, in soaps and make calendula oil for um, salves. Apple Blossom Snapdragon. I have wanted this one from a long time, but it seems to always be sold out everywhere. I noticed there's not many in the packet. <laughs> um, Shirley Double Mixed Poppies. These are pretty. Velvet Queen Sunflower. So this, when I bought the Mexican Flat Sunflower, um, it said that it would come out looking like this, that this one doesn't actually look this way in real life. We'll, we'll find out. Kabocha squash, again, for fall decoration. Black futsu squash, again, for fall decoration. Winter luxury pumpkin. I always love these because they have that, like, frosted look. Uh, delicious tomato, because who's not going to try a tomato that just says delicious on it, right? Like, Amish paste. I had some Amish. I grow a lot of them because I do a lot of tomato canning. Um, I, I make can, my canned tomatoes, my barbecue sauce, my spaghetti sauce, my ketchup all of it. Um, I do have a lot of Amish paste, but I needed a few more to fill out my rows there. Shallots, Zebrun shallot, spearmint, dark opal basil. Again, not my, I've talked about this one before. It's not my favorite flavor, so I don't grow it every year, but I love the way it looks in the garden. It's absolutely beautiful. And I thought I would use it as a little bit of filler this year in some flowers. Uh, purple cone flower, um, mites, I might put that in my front because those are perennial and I'm trying to put more perennials out there. Um, a ground cherry, I like the ground cherries. Pineapple is my favorite one. Ornamental wheat black tip, again, for just fillers and fall foliage. Jubilee watermelon, I think I planted this one a few years ago and I didn't have a great watermelon year that year so I wanted to try it again. Um, a red scent to floor tomato, this is another red cherry that I'm trying to um, see if it floats my boat, same with just small red cherry tomato. Dr. Witchy's yellow. <laughs> um, a lot of people love this. I'm not a huge yellow tomato fan, so I thought I would try it and see. Persimmon tomato. Just sounded intriguing. I like persimmons. Yellow pear tomato. This is one of the standard ones I grow every year. Rio Grande tomatillo. This is, I grow tomatillos. Uh, this is my favorite one to grow. Um, is it Rio Grande? Craig's Grande. No, that's a jalapeno. Rio Grande. Um, I make salsa verde with it and green salsa, which is what salsa verde means. But. Okay, mammoth basil, um, just because that looks huge too. Holy basil, I wanted to um, use it in some medicinal things. Italian oregano, I have a huge oregano plant in my garden that is perennial and it's come back year after year, but I wanna move where I put my herbs this year, so. I bought more seeds. Broadleaf sage, I don't have in my garden. Chives, I thought I would try chives because I'm having not very good luck with green onions, which is weird to me. They've never been a problem until I moved here. I thought I'd try chives and see if that's a little better. 
very close. Um, complimentary seeds of salad bowl mixed greens. Scarlet kale, one of my daughters loves the scarlet. Pak choy white stem, um, great in stir fries. Napa cabbage, we love Chinese chicken salad with this. Armenian yard long cucumbers are my favorite for bread and butter pickles. Market More 76 Cucumber, if you watched my video about the um, review of last year's two different Market More Cucumbers, these were the ones that went out. Scarlet Nancy is our favorite carrot. I just got one packet because uh, I have some in my stash. Roma Tomato, um, I have not grown. These are paste tomato like Amish paste and I just haven't grown these, but a lot of people like them, so I thought I would try them. I got some more peanuts. I do like to grow peanuts. Um, more. I think this is all. Oh, hello. Falling all over. Great white tomato. Doesn't look white in the picture, but online it did. Just for fun. Beef steak is one of the standard ones I grow every year. I grow for slicing tomatoes. I grow beef steaks and momotoros. Um, and I have, I have one row of beef steaks, two rows of momotoros. I might have to cut that back because I have a lot of experimental ones this year. Lady slipper radish. This looks fun. It is, um, most mild heirloom variety is what it said on the packet. And I like the more mild, less spicy radishes. White icicle radish, again, um, Japanese, supposed to be slightly calmer. Valenciano pumpkin I got for fall um, decoration. Same with the cacao pumpkin, which is also supposed to be the easiest pumpkin seeds. They're holeless for roasted seeds. Golden Hubbard squash. Any of these winter squashes and pumpkins I grow for foliage, we don't really eat them. We don't really like I will cook and freeze some pumpkin for winter cooking, but other than that, we don't do a whole lot. French, French breakfast radish are my favorite radishes. They're the most mild that I've tried so far. Daikon radish should be very similar to the white icicle radish. Uh, the Ruta Vega, this is actually a purple top turnip, I believe. Jicama, I love to grow every year. I love jicama. I need to find, I wonder if it would make good freeze-dried chips. I need to find some way to preserve that because it's so light and fresh and juicy and crisp. Spaghetti squash is one of the few winter squashes I eat. Black Beauty zucchini. I pretty much grow one zucchini plant a year because we don't do that much with it. Delicata is the other winter squash I grow to eat. I love delicata squash. Blue Hubbard squash, again, for the fall decoration. Tigger melon, I thought if we don't like it, it could be a fall decoration as well because it's pretty and has the right color. Spring blush pea, I've wanted to grow these for a few years, but he's always been sold out when I want them. They're just pretty. And we do like peas. Jalapenos, I grew a lot of jalapenos. Decided to make uh, my own cayenne powder this year. Pimentos, last year I grew pimentos and I liked them, but they didn't do well because they were overcrowded. So I'll give them a little more space this year. Anaheim peppers, I grow these every year. And this is what I make my green chilies with that I can and I make my own rotel with. My standard bell pepper I order every year is the California Wonder. It does well, it's done well with me in like three different zones and you just leave it, if you want a red one, you just leave it on longer and it turns red. Um, and then there's the Golden Wonder. So I thought I would try that one because it's a California Wonder. Banana peppers I grow every year and these are what I slice and pickle and, and use instead of pepperoncinis. Tabasco pepper, I thought I'd make Tabasco sauce. My brother-in-law loves Tabasco sauce. I thought I'd try to make him some. Pumpkin spice jalapeno. Now the normally, there's a bunch of different flavors of jalapenos and I normally don't try to mess with like orange slice and whatever. But for some reason, this one was, um, Something in the description online or something just stood out to me and I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna try it. Dixie Queen Watermelon, this one's new to me. Delice de la Table Melon. I'm not a huge melon person, but this description looked good and it's a beautiful melon. Some more onions. I have the Utah Yellow Spanish Onion and the Texas Early Grano Onion and the Alyssa Craig. These are supposed to be gigantic, but these are a Northern Long Day Onion. Walla Walla, see I grew these last year and they're long day and they did great for me. Sugar snap peas, just standard sugar snap peas have been our favorite over the other ones and these are our, one of our favorite snacks. Um, so that, let's see, um, I think that's all. I did get some of the trifecta from MI Gardener to try, I've never tried that, um, we'll see how that goes. I just got one bag of it, um, it's not very big so I'm not sure how much I'll get done with that. But that is my seed haul for this year. 
I need to get these sorted with my other things and then resorted into planting dates and I probably make a video about that. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in how I organize them for planting, which is different than organizing my seeds for storage. Um, I would love to know what you are trying that is new this year and what is your standby favorite, especially if you have a little red tomato or a great slicing cucumber. Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys at the next time. Mm -hmm.